we're gonna let nobody turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. We're gonna let nobody turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, walking down to freedom land. Ridiculous right now, I understand. Um, what that is, is it's actually the canopies who are tarp. Um, we were, it was me and this other dude named Alex, and we were staying with this guy who had a tent, but he had to leave yesterday. So we uh, gathered up around a bunch of random shit and made a uh, made this structure right now, which holds up a tarp that we then hold down along the sides. So actually, it's good. what you're seeing right now is the uh, central pillar to a uh, tent. So what, what made you want to come to New York as opposed to stay in Lincoln with Occupy Lincoln? Whether or not people want to admit it, this is the focal point. This is like the, uh, this is what everyone's watching is here in Zuccotti Park. Uh, a lot of people worry that that gets into, you know, hierarchy, hierarchyism or whatever you'd say about that, you know, a hierarchical structure where, like, you know, somehow we're the kingpins. It's not so much that we're the kingpins as it is that we're the visible face of this movement. And so, here in Zuccotti Park, we got to make sure that this, ma this is maintained and this is like, you know, if this is the de facto face of the movement, that this can stay alive through the winter. I'm Victor. I'm, I'm from East L.A. originally, but I've loved New York for a long time. But I think people have made this their occupation. And this is an important thing that they're doing. Just their presence here is important. I saw a ridiculous article that came out of the New York Times where they say Occupy Wall Street is struggling to make itself seem like the 99% and that it's mostly white, middle-class people, something like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. The people that are living here are living in really dangerous conditions in the cold. They're living in the middle of the biggest city in the world, not to mention risking arrest, pepper spray, etc., etc. Et the people that are here are, are of all kinds. There's a lot of unemployed people here, but this is their employment. This is it. But I've seen priests here. I've seen doctors here, lawyers here, legal activists here, moms, families, and of all different races and colors. Yeah. So can I get your name and where you're from, please? My name is Ted. Where are you from? West 88th Street. Do you bike uh, as a hobby? Nope. Nope, just here to uh, help sustain power? Just... To, uh, to create power to fight the power, if you like. <laughs> Very cool. So, Ted, what brought you to Occupy Wall Street? This, the best thing that happens is Woodstock. Yeah? Yep. And I was at Woodstock, and uh, this, is, this, is, this is really contagious because the message is so right, it's irresistible, and it's spreading worldwide. Very good. And, Ted, I hope you don't mind me asking, but how, how old are you? 63. 63. You plan to be down here all winter biking? You bet. God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay. Who protect? Who do you serve? Who do you protect? Who do you serve? Who do you protect? Who do you serve? Who do you protect? Shame you you on you! No one is watching! Shame on you! Watch me! Watch me! Fucking assholes! Watch me! Come on! My name is Justin Stone Diaz. I'm originally from inner city Connecticut, Bridgeport, and I currently live in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. Very cool. So um, all the printing that you guys do, is that done locally? In Most of it's done locally. Um, the thing is, too, a lot of our, our publications you see aren't done by us, but are done by affinity groups, um, like this beautiful The Declaration of the Occupation of New York. That was actually produced by the Sparrow Project and um, the ACLU. Gotcha. And they just took all the information that they knew we agreed on as an organization and they put it in this great collectible piece of something people can walk away with. Very cool. So there's a, so the Occupy movement definitely is working with other groups to help facilitate the message. Oh, definitely. It's just natural. I mean, the thing is, too, we're trying to basically each of the occupations have a different focus. Us being the first in the states, we're focusing on the organization side. So we're really waiting for the other occupations to realize what we're doing and then use our website and contact us because... What we have now is nycga.net, but eventually there's going to be laga.net, sfga, and all the occupations. We have a free open source model. We're just waiting for them to ask for. Um, a couple of cities have already keyed in, but it'll take them a month to build it out like it took us. Gotcha, gotcha. So is that is that the long-term plan for the movement? Is it just to um, continue to localize and then well, create sustainable... Well, to, to be clear, again, the, the, the only movement we, we're doing is showing people to do micro local action in their neighborhood there are people in our community that are working to interconnect us um, but our main focus as an organization is occupying wall street and keeping this park open to the public
It's just interesting that, you know, from the beginning we've been very clear communicators, but we've been using social media to communicate with, and the rest of the world doesn't speak Twitter yet, and we were arrogant assuming that people would know how to listen to us, so it's been a matter of, like, people coming to us with misinformation and just gently going, well, they come to us, the biggest thing is like, oh, I went to your website, OccupyWallStreet.org. Well, that's not our website. Mm -hmm. NYCGA.net is the only website produced by Occupy Wall Street. That other site, it's an affinity site. Some activists that helped start this, they were here the first week and they decided to keep the website going. But if you look on that website, most of the donation links don't go to us. They go to other affinity groups that are working towards efforts, but not specifically here at Zuccotti Park. Gotcha. So do, do you see that as a challenge or is it just a no, byproduct it, of... It's, it's the best marketing strategy in the world. So many people are trying to help us, but they're actually co-opting us. But that misinformation just causes people not to know what's going on, and eventually they have to come down here. Mm -hmm. And so it's the best piece of viral marketing. We couldn't have designed it better, and it just sort of happened by circumstance. Bad information is actually helping us at this point. Just a couple of easy questions, nothing right. crazy. Okay. So let's get your, uh, your name and uh, where you're from. Alec Courtney from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Very cool. And uh, what brought you to Occupy Wall Street? Uh, I'm homeless at the moment, and I want to see social welfare reform. Now, how long have you been homeless? Three weeks. Three been weeks? here two weeks. So I probably answered that other question, right? Oh, yeah. How long have I been here? That's, so uh, what made you set up the shoe shine? Oh, stand? well, I was panhandling, and I just, that, it sucked. It took it took a lot out of me doing the panhandling. I just said, I can't do it. I'm not good at a rejection, I guess. So I just decided to set up little shoe shines and it said, instead to make money. Very cool. And what, what's this made out of here? Is this a, uh... Well, this is actually an old um, baby carriage, and I just I reformed it. <laughs> Put a seat on it with the help of a friend, and put a sign, and it's my shoe shine stand now. That's great. And how many people? How many shoes you shine a, a day? A day? Uh, maybe ten pairs on average. Nice, nice. So, have you seen a lot of uh, bankers come around this site? It looks like this has become not only a, you know a movement but a tourist destination. Oh yeah, big time. I mean, I, my economy right here thrives on tourism, uh, which is ironic, being you know that whatever this movement. Um, yeah, not not too many bankers. No, I get mostly mostly older women. To be honest with you. <laughs> cool, cool. So, uh, so what would you like to see uh, come out of this? Eventually? I'd like to see social welfare reform. I mean, you know, I've told people before, I'll get out of here the minute I get a job because I'm, you know, able to work, sober and, and able to work, and um, I get a house here too. I need an apartment here to live, shelter, because it's getting it's going to be winter soon, and I've been through a lot of northeastern winters, and they're not pretty. No, yeah. So, do you see yourself staying here throughout the winter at Occupy Wall Street, or? I hope not. <laughs> but I may. I may be here, yes. All right. Very cool. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the movement or, uh, you know, your situation down here? Um, not really. I mean, there's some people, you know, I've noticed that, you know, I don't, cannot, they're not in touch with reality a little bit, I've noticed. Mm. Quite a few people. I, mean, I get a lot of crap for this, being that it's an enterprise, mm. and kind of, you know, I'm making money and profit off it. And I just, I don't understand, you know, we live in a capitalist society. It's not going to change. Capitalism is the worst and the best thing we got. So yeah, I just feel like people aren't in touch with reality. Even some of the people who run the movement aren't in touch with reality. Mm. You know what I mean? Because we need money for things. They assume that we they have food and give us shelter, food and water. We're fine. But this is New York City. Come on. Yeah. Give me a break. It's New Amsterdam. Right, right. That's so, all I have to say. And the food's driving me nuts, too, because it's all vegetables. Honestly, man, you know, third world countries don't have the luxury to choose to be a vegetarian or vegan. So I feel that's a bit hypocritical, but... You know, like a hippie doesn't that come from hypocrite, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's all I have to add.
devils that very night, the soldier finds that the devil didn't cheat. New clothes, soft bed, and plenty to eat, the best of everything. The strange book they read every day, and Joseph the soldier taught the devil to play. Two glorious days well spent, then came the third. That morning the devil wakes Joseph as soon as it's light, and he says, are you ready? And Joseph says, right. Did you have a good night? Joseph says, yes. And the devil looks on as he gets up to dress. Awesome. Uh, so can I just get your name and where you're from? Um, my name's Dave Harold, and I'm from the Bronx. Bronx, nice. And uh, so what brought you to Occupy Wall Street? Uh, my overdeveloped need to help people. I, uh, I saw that they, they had a medic tent set up here, so I said, okay, I can do the most good there, so I just flocked to that. Cool. So do you have any uh, previous medical experience? I or? have first aid training and CPR training. Nice. Although I'm not, I should actually get certified for it. I, I just haven't gotten around to it. Gotcha. So uh, what would you say the most common uh, injury you guys see is? Uh, so far in this general area, like being that it's uh, like getting towards the cold months, um, most injuries, I wouldn't say injuries, but the most uh, common ailments would be uh, stage 1 hypothermia, uh, trench foot because they, because some people just don't change their socks, and uh, occasional cuts, scrapes, stuff like that. That's yeah, some basic stuff. Oh, okay. So you haven't seen anything really serious? No. no. Gotcha. So, um, so you guys have a pretty nice setup here. Uh, we do. I mean, you have a couple tents set up. Are you... Do you put sick people in there? Yes. Okay. Uh, the bigger tent is for our makeshift triage, where we handle like the large cases. Our uh, our this other the green tent over here is for herbal medicine. Gotcha. And, so like alternative medicines, that sort of thing. Okay. So what what would constitute a large case? Just a large case would be someone who uh, has been assaulted or the, because there have been cases that people have been hurt. Uh, because tensions are pretty high, so you have so many people packed in one in one area. Uh, the most extreme I'd have to say was a guy that got uh, like he got punched in the face, and uh, we had to treat him in the large tent. We're gonna let go to the cracks. Turn us around. Turn us around. Turn us around. We're gonna let go to the cracks. Turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking. Keep on talking, walking down to freedom land. We're gonna let no Fox News turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. We're gonna let no Fox News turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, walking down to freedom land. We're gonna let no Murdochs turn us around, turn us around. Turn us around, we're gonna let no Murdochs turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, walking down to freedom land. We're gonna let no monopolists turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. We're gonna let no monopolists turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, walking down to freedom land. We're gonna let no Wall Street turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. We're gonna let no Wall Street turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, walking down to freedom land. We're gonna let no winter turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. We're gonna let no winter turn us around. We're gonna keep on camping. Keep on camping, camping down to freedom land. We're gonna let nobody turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. We're gonna let nobody turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, walking down to freedom.